welcome back to my channel i'm happy that you guys are here i have started a book club so this is me i love books i buy books often and i start to read them because of something and then usually i stop reading them before i'm finished and it's dawned upon me that i'm really not completing books and there are secrets in these books that's why i bought it for for the value for the knowledge right 2022 is my year of completion and i'm taking you all along so this is the plan i am going to read i have i don't know maybe 12 15 books that i have bought with every intention of reading and i'm going to read them chapter by chapter and then i'll do a video review of the chapter and we can kind of just talk about it um as i go along and through these books and if you catch me in the mix you can get the book and you know put your takeaways in the in the in the comments yeah if y'all not a part of my tech squad you should be the tech squad new first so text me text tri squad to 720-706 something i think it's 5837 but i'll put it on the screen and you can be up on everything before everyone else is. The first book is The Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. Hello. The author is Stephen R. Covey. He wrote this book in 1989, and he said that most of the motivation, personal development that is going on in the world today, or at least in that day, has to do with personality, behaviors that we can alter so we can be better and more effective. And he said, we need to get back to actually building up our character. You can have a good attitude all you want, but if you really don't know where you're going, he used the analogy of a map. He said, if you're in Chicago and you're trying to navigate in Chicago, but you have the map for Detroit, more than likely you're not gonna get where you need to go. So having a, a positive attitude isn't going to help you if you don't have the right tool for the job. And I like it. He said he has an inside out approach. I am deferring any uh, judgments I have about the book to the very end, but it has high promises. And it caught me here, right? said, I've started a new diet for the fifth time this year. I know I'm overweight and I really want to change. I read all the new information. I set goals. I get myself all psyched up with a positive mental attitude and tell myself I can do it, but I don't. After a few weeks, I fizzle. I just can't seem to keep a promise I make to myself. So I'm hooked there because, you know, I can relate. And, um... Yeah, so he's saying that this inside out, this is going to be an inside out approach. Now, I wrote the definitions here. Um, paradigms is what he's talking about. Hold on. Paradigms means the model or the theory, or it's the way in which we understand. And then there's principles. These are the natural laws. These are unchanging, unarguable, uh, like gravity, right? And so what he's saying is we need to consider the paradigm, the way we're looking at the problem. That's the problem. Um, he had this great picture in this book. I hope it comes out. You know, he said this picture, many people see this picture and they see the young woman, right? She has a nice hat, you know, she looks like she's going to a fancy party. But then other people see an old lady, really old, decrepit, with a huge nose and a shawl, look like somebody you may need to help across the street. If two people are looking at this picture and they see the situation differently, who's wrong? They both 
what they see has to do with how they've been trained up, the experiences they have, you know? So that's good. Also, he had a story in here about a paradigm shift. And I've heard this story before, but I'm gonna share it with you if I can find it. Hmm. I'll tell you the story. So he said he's on a train. On a train, it's kind of a lazy day. People are reading the paper, maybe dozing off to sleep just a little bit, but on the train, the atmosphere is really, really quiet. And then a gentleman and his children get on the train. The children are disruptive. The man seems oblivious to what the children are doing. And after uh, some moments pass and these children are so disruptive and you can see other people being upset and annoyed, he, um, he speaks to the man. He's like, hey, can you get your children? They are really being disruptive. I mean, you may want to be more aware and pay attention to how they're bothering people, that, that type of thing. And the man apologized. And he said, I know I should be more attentive, but we just left the hospital and their mother, my wife, she died. And, and I just, I don't even know any up or down right now. And the children, they don't know how to handle this either. It's at that moment that he says, all of this empathy rushed in, right? Excuse me, all of this empathy rushed in for the situation. But however he's been trained, he, he took that information that he's seen and he made a lot of assumptions about the man and the man's values and the man, you know, and how he handles things and he's probably lazy and, you know, all of these things. But now he has all this empathy. It's like, that is the problem. So um, I'm going to, let me share something else of why this touched me. Me and my husband have, I have been personally in therapy for a long time and I've had some relationship issues with my husband. Y'all, I love my husband. We're good. But communication, interpersonal communication is hard if we don't really try. Anyway, when I went to therapy and was complaining about my husband, I felt like something, the reason why this isn't working is because something is wrong with him. He is, he don't care about anything. He's not emotional. He doesn't feel like I feel. And that is the problem, right? But what I've learned so far in therapy is that nothing is wrong with my husband. The way that he is, his analytical way, that's his superpower. That is how he has been able to navigate the world. That's kept him safe. And, and all of these things. And there is nothing wrong with me. I'm very emotional, I'm feeling, I'm sensitive. I'm an empath, right? That, those are my superpowers. Those things have kept me safe. But in relating to each other, it is better for us to, um, to, to understand. But if we all, if we, blah, 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 if we come to it feeling like something is wrong with the other person, we're not going to get anywhere. So this is speaking my language because this is where I'm at um, in, my, in my own life. So I'm very excited to get to the actual habits. So that's where he starts. He said that what he is about to offer is not techniques. It is not little uh, short-term fixes. This is working on ourselves from the inside out and really recognizing how we're thinking about situations and coming with that knowledge. I don't even know, but that's where I'm at and that's what I'm getting so far. If you have read this and you got something different, leave that in the comments. Um, I'm, I'm excited. I don't know how long it's going to be because I plan to release a a video as soon as I'm done with the chapter. It'll be real informal, not a whole big to do, but we'll see and we'll get through this book and, 
and I'll take another one off the shelf. Maybe I'll put a poll up or ask the people in my tech squad what they want to, which book we want to go to next. So I'm excited. Chapter one, Paradigms and Principles. And we're going to do this thing inside out and see what Stephen Covey has to say in this seven habits. Thank y'all for watching.